Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Title Minute. On today's episode of the Title Minute, we're going to go over the statement of information and discuss why it's important when purchasing or refinancing a property and how it affects title. Now, the statement of information is required for every buyer, seller, and borrower of real property. What's going to happen is when Fidelity runs the preliminary title report, part of that preliminary title report is called a general index. The general index is a database that includes liens and encumbrances such as judgments, child support liens, tax liens, things like that. It's run by the government. And what happens is, is if our borrower, seller, or buyer's name shows up within that general index, it's gonna show up on the preliminary title report. The question that we get asked all the time is, how do we know that that lien belongs to our seller or our borrower? Or people come to us and say, hey, I don't even have kids. Why is that child support judgment showing up on the preliminary title report? Not to worry, it's all part of the general index. What Fidelity does is it takes that statement of information and it's gonna run the statement of information against the general index to make sure that the liens that show up either belong to our buyer, seller, or borrower, or if they don't, it simply gets removed from the prelim. It's a one-page form, it's not specific to any title company, and it's required for all transactions. So it's really important that you have your folks fill this out as quickly as possible to make sure that there aren't any surprises during the process. All right, now let me give you an example of where the statement of information might come into play. Let's say that your borrower or your seller has a really common name, like John Smith. Now, John Smith, there's probably a lot of them in the United States. One of them might owe money to the government or be passed due on their child support. Those items in the general index are gonna show up on the prelim. So what we do is we use the statement of information to, to remove any discrepancies that might occur. So John Smith might well in fact owe child support in the state of Florida, it might not be our John Smith that's selling the property. And that's how we use the statement of information to fix any of those discrepancies. Now, in certain situations, once we receive the statement of information and run it against the person's name, liens and encumbrances can actually be added to the preliminary title report. That's why it's so important that we receive the statement of information as quickly as possible. The items that are going to show up because of the statement of information are all federal or state issues that can take a long time for us to gather the information in order to pay those off. So if you have a property and you're representing the seller and the preliminary title report comes back with stuff that doesn't belong to the seller, not to worry. Fill out the statement of information, get it back to us, and we'll take care of those discrepancies. That's why we call it a preliminary title report. If you have any questions on how those items can show up and affect your prelim, or you just need a copy of the statement of information so that you have it, be sure to reach out to us. We'll be here to help. Take care.